You trying to get a look at what greatness looks like? Yeah, go ahead and keep staring. I'll call you next time we go bird hunting. Oh, shit. Ah! Ah! You put that file down. It'll buff, I swear. Yeah, I don't think so, bud. I don't think so. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah, that's what I've been looking for. I finally got something. You're out of here. Arch strikes, they happen to the best of us, especially when we're learning, they happen a lot, more often than we'd like to say. What exactly are arc strikes? Why are they no good? How do you end up getting them? How can you fix them? And then ultimately, how do you avoid them in the first place? That's a lot of stuff to talk about on such a little tiny thing. Now, what exactly is an arc strike? The electrode of the welding process or the ground clamp, one or the other, some electrical conductivity that you're putting the material on has been accidentally grazed or touched. Whether you're TIG welding, your stick welding and the electrode from the tungsten or the stick rod happens hell even with the MIG wire. If you touch the base metal outside of the weld groove or well, anywhere it touches, it's gonna leave a little bit of a mark. These things are bad for certain reasons. Now, from a visual aspect, and not from a structural or a pressure aspect. Visually, they're just not good looking. It's poor craftsmanship having all these little bumps and low spots on the actual part that you're trying to make, as well as leaving porosity. And it doesn't matter whether you try to buff it off with a wire wheel or even try to hit it with a file, some of the stuff is not gonna come out. And this becomes an issue on non-structural things because they're probably gonna wanna paint it. And now again, with the whole craftsmanship thing, it just looks bad. And when you start adding a lot of pressure and a lot of resistance in it, things can get a lot more serious when it comes to just a little arc strike. Arc strikes, arc marks, chicken scratch, they go by a few names, but essentially you did something as far as arcing off on the base material, you got a rod stuck and then you rip that sucker right off and now you got all these dudes and dots on there. The biggest thing to take away from this from an inspection and a metallurgical aspect is to form cracks and make things brittle, you've gotta get them hot and cold really quickly, or you get them really hot and they cool off really quickly. That little mark was very, 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 very super hot for just a brief, brief moment, and then it froze instantly on top of that very thick base metal. You could produce a much more brittle grain structure, or you can make something hardened. What that usually forms is cracks. Now this is very important when it comes to things that are cyclically loaded or there's a lot of pressure inside of them or there's a lot of heat that's going up and down, up and down and things are moving because what do cracks do? They grow or in engineer speak, they propagate. This little arc mark that you made uh, becomes a new stress riser because of the hardened weld area heat affected zone and the material thickness is now thinner or weaker this crack starts to form and then grows and then next thing we know this arc strike turns into a catastrophic failure. Well how exactly do you get an arc strike in the first place? I'll be the first one to tell you it's always your fault. It's pure negligence. You're not paying attention. Maybe you set your TIG torch over top of the pipe and it arced off on the pipe. Maybe you were just trying to turn around or bend over and that stick rod swiped across it. Maybe you didn't have a good ground connection or maybe your part's rolling and that ground is just dragging across the part as it's rotating. You're gonna leave some arc marks. With your stick rod, if you're sitting there trying to tap it too hard, that second tap might be outside of your weld zone and now you got an arc mark. Or maybe you stuck too hard and you get mad and you rip it off. Well, you're probably gonna leave an arc mark. If you're TIG welding, your foot pedal's all the way down and you try to take off with the foot pedal down, you're gonna leave an arc mark. Or maybe you don't have a foot pedal and you're running lift arc or scratch start and you're welding along and you slowly get off of that pipe or plate, you're gonna leave an arc mark. There are easy ways to avoid it and we'll get into that, but first of all, like, when is it a problem, when isn't it? Now, as an inspector for nearly nine years, now, damn, has it been that long? Two codes come to mind, B313 and API 1104. B313 will allow you to actually weld and grind outside of your weld zone or your bevels. When we had to weld on plate dogs to line up pipe, it wasn't a problem. We were able to weld dogs onto the outside, whether it was on pressure vessels or pressure piping, we could weld to the outside and then we would break those dogs off and grind down. So same thing with arc marks. If you had an arc mark on there, all you wanted to do was try to blend it in so that it wasn't visible anymore because that's what the code required was that they weren't visible and it allowed welding and grinding outside the weld zone. However, if your arc mark is too bad and it gets too deep, then you start having to grind too thin and the inspector may call for a, a BMR repair, which is a base metal reduction repair. Now that the base metal is not as 
thick as it used to be, we have to go in and weld and, and fix it. That's kind of like the worst case scenario if the arc mark gets too bad and that's gonna be a repair on your record still. But in most cases in this code, the arc mark can be removed with some filing or some light sanding with a, with a flap wheel and you're pretty much okay. Even the inspector might even walk up to you and say, hey, I still see this little arc mark, just make sure you blend it in. When it comes to API 1104 code, it's a little bit different. Actually, it's a lot different. They don't allow any grinding or welding outside the weld zone whatsoever. So if you end up getting an arc strike outside your bevel, that's welding outside that groove and it's unacceptable. You're not allowed to do it. What ends up happening is you just try to hide it your best, but you can't grind it off because there's no grinding outside the weld zone either. And it's usually coated pipe, so it's pretty obvious of what had happened there. So you do your best to maybe rough it up with some file, rub it in with your glove. I've seen it as worse as happening just cutting the entire weld section out because of the arc strike and firing that welder for doing it. If you're welding on Pawpaw's fence or maybe some handrails or some structure that's not necessarily super critical, arc strikes probably aren't gonna be your biggest concern. It's just a craftsmanship issue at that point. It just doesn't look good. Aesthetically, it's unpleasing. And if the company man doesn't want arc marks on there, we don't wanna have arc marks on there. So while you're in welding school, make sure you're doing your best not to get any arc marks. Hold yourself accountable for zero. Well, I guess hold yourself accountable for all of them. Try to get zero. <laughs> Now remember guys, you can arc strike and weld and grind in this bevel as much as you want. This is where the welder gets to play. All that material outside of that, that's the company man's and you're not allowed to touch it. If you think of it that way, that's a good way of just keeping your arc strikes where they need to be. Uh, if you're trying to prevent them, do the obvious stuff. Don't put your stinger and live connections anywhere that metal is touching. Just be very aware of your surroundings and where you're laying things down so you don't arc on any material. But if you're stick welding and you're going into it, maybe you might need to you know, grab it with two fingers to get started and then move that hand out of some danger so that you're able to not burn up your hand and have an easier start. If you stick your stick rod, guys, calm down, relax, don't freak out, don't get mad and rip it off to the left, right, up or down, depending on where that material is because you will leave an arc strike. Just calm down and pull it from the back side on your stinger. Now that's gonna wear out your stinger a lot quicker, but we're gonna try to avoid sticking rods as best we can, and you won't arc strike on the material. As far as TIG welding goes, there's a lot of different tricks. It depends on whether or not you're running a remote. If you're running a remote like a foot pedal, make sure that you're not on your foot pedal until you're on your material. Because if you're coming in and you got your foot pedal already pressed down, it's gonna strike when it gets close. Same thing with if you're already welding and you got your foot pedal down, if you don't take your foot off that remote before you take your torch off the pipe, it will arc off on the pipe. It's gonna try to find that that material because it's your remote's telling you it should be. If you're not running a remote and you're running a live or scratch start setup with your TIGS torch, make sure that whenever you're lifting off, you do it quick. You do it quick and in a hurry and in line with your bevel. If you go lazy about it, you'll probably arc mark. But if you do it really quick, you shouldn't have any issues. You can even go fast and back down so that you can half ass do an attempt for a post flow. You can also do the really cool trick where you can TIG weld and then when you're ready to stop, run your arc and terminate it up your wire so that all the arc marks are up on your wire. Make sure that you're practicing the right fundamentals like not getting arc marks and just having five or six of them and being like, oh, it's okay. No, it, it honestly isn't. It looks bad on you and it could cost your job potentially. I hope you guys took some value out of this video. I know I had a good time making it. If you have any more questions about other discontinuities and issues, leave them down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. We'll see you all on the next weld. Can't get the damn rod to stick. Pretty good.